thanks for this uh, opportunity for me to share uh, some of my thoughts uh, as as we are working on this issue of India. So I have been tied up with this uh, with this issue for years. Uh, very quickly, I will focus on three issues. The first thing that we have to keep in mind is we literally have a population bigger than Bhutan inside Bangladesh in three months. Bhutan became Bhutan in 60,000 years. But this population, which is 1.1 million, Bhutan has a population of 800,000. And they have a king. We don't even have a king. This 1.1 million is literally looked after by Triple RC official who is, who is younger than me. So you can well imagine the context, uh, no infrastructure, nothing of that in three months' time. That's, that's the magnitude that we are dealing with. So on the issue of response, the first thing we have to keep in mind that in the 70s and the 90s they came, but this time is different. This time is different because in the 70s and 90s we did not have enough evidence that they committed whatever name you want to use, uh, well, three legal concepts, whether it's crime against humanity or war crime or genocide. We didn't have in the 70s and the 90s, though there are scholars who, have, who probably would, would go far and say that Myanmar military has been committing genocide for years. But in the 70s and the 90s, uh, repatriation uh, took place. I was a little bit involved in the, in the 90s. And I remember telling the UNHCR head at that particular time that, well, they are going back, but what about the issue of citizenship? And the answer was, Prof, don't worry about that. Since Myanmar is taking them back, that means today or tomorrow they will get uh, the citizenship. Uh, and I was quite surprised with the statement. And you can easily see the UNHCR has failed. It has also failed because if you have, uh, you know, if you've heard Chris's uh, um, in the presentation, the dates are very important. You know, it started with the 25th, but let's start with 23rd August. 23rd August, uh, Kofi Annan Commission report was handed over. 24th August, it was published. Then 25th, you have the RSA attack, and 26th, you have what is regarded as the crime against humanity. So you can see that they were pretty prepared, and the very shifting of the two regiments from the Kachin to Arakan uh, region also tells you. And this is where I think we have failed. Well, Bangladesh also has failed. Uh, we should have raised the flag because that regiment has been involved in genocide in other areas also. Myanmar has not committed genocide only against uh, Rohingyas. They have committed genocide with other minorities as well. But they got away uh, and still getting away for, for different reasons. Uh, in the context of response, why Bangladesh has succeeded in managing, I would say, 1.1 million uh, in a reasonable, uh, you know, I would say, uh, at least I was thoroughly impressed. I remember going back in, in, in the second month, uh, around September, and it was really depressing. But when I went back in January 2018, uh, and even last month, uh, I must say that, you know, knowing some of the refugee conditions around the world, I, I was thoroughly impressed. Uh, I also had experience back in 71. I was just a class 9 student, uh, 14 to 15 years old, left my parents to join uh, the Mukti Bahaini or the Liberation Force to India. And I, I remember in Agartala uh, my experience uh, with the Force of Fiji camps. And if you compare that, I will tell government has managed pretty well. But there, the answer has to be the unique of geo and geo partnership. I think people forget that Bangladesh has, you know, we have the largest NGO in the world, which is BRAC, and there are X number of NGOs, and this GEO and NGO partnership worked in, in an absolutely fascinating manner. So this is something to learn. But the response, you know, to be very frank, uh, now that we, we, it's already nearly two years, and I see uh, increasingly uh, that the gaze is shifting from Myanmar to Bangladesh. I think that's very really unfortunate. It's unfortunate because, uh, as the High Commissioner was saying, uh, and also Chris, that this time we have evidence of, of genocide or crime against humanity. 
anywhere, anywhere in the world, when a crime against humanity takes place, or war crime, or genocide, it cannot remain bilateral. It cannot remain bilateral. It becomes international by definition. This is the issue. The second issue is Rohingyas are not only in Bangladesh. Uh, probably Nur Islam will be able to say more on that. At least in my estimate, uh, there are 19 countries, and we have figures on that uh, that spread throughout, throughout the world. So it's not only the issue of Bangladesh, they remain stateless in X number of the countries uh, in the world, though Bangladesh, you know, probably, well, we have the largest number of, of, of them. So the gays ought to be uh, around Myanmar, and, and this is something, uh, you know, uh, those who are sitting in front of me uh, and, and working in, in different areas uh, ought to remember when it comes to response, yes, Bangladesh has done uh, to whatever it has. And if you compare now uh, US-Mexico border and see some of the footages, believe it or not, I think we can take some little bit of pride that Bangladesh has done a little bit better than uh, Donald Trump uh, in, in, in his border. So, Given that context, uh, I think the, the response is one area where I'm sure today and tomorrow we need to talk more about that. The second one is the issue of protection. Now, uh, my High Commission has already talked a little bit on that, uh, of the Bhashan Chor area, and I understand that that's the only thing that has been tweeted around already. Uh, let's, be, let's be very you know, objective of what is happening. Well, around 98,000, 100,000 are really in a vulnerable situation in the slopes. Out of 1.1 million, 100,000 are really in a vulnerable situation where they are staying today. These are the people that need to be moved somewhere, okay, to here tomorrow. Last year we were success, we were uh, we were lucky uh, that the rainfall was not that much, and I remember going immediately after the heavy rainfall, and you know Bangladesh, we have a serious rainfall and the cloud burst and all, uh, we were lucky uh, that it was not that much. But you can be lucky uh, once, you can't be lucky every year. So we, we really don't know what will happen this time. So these uh, all 100,000 that we are talking about have to be moved somewhere. And one idea is Vashan Chor. I understand there are critics, if, if they are, uh, you know, I, I always tell them, I say also in Bangladesh uh, to the international community, please, if you have other options, uh, if you want to take them, it's fine. <coughs> But don't tell us after a crisis or after they suffered uh, a climatic condition, uh, you know, this year and, and say, oh, uh, oh, something has gone wrong, uh, you know, that would not be acceptable. So what do you do with that? And, and, and this, is, this is something that we need to keep. So when it comes to protection, uh, the annual cost is over 950 million, uh, not all of that is coming. Uh, I guess Bangladesh uh, did what it could because we also have a growth uh, which is, you know, 6% plus for, for quite some years. Uh, and I, I think that that, I think, also helped Bangladesh uh, to work on, 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 on managing this. Region. The last one, in last uh, one minute or so, is the issue of justice. Uh, Chris has pointed out on, 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 on some of the facts uh, that they have outlined. Uh, I think it's important, uh, and I've been telling my government also, that even if 100% goes back, let's, let's take it hypothetically, even if 100% goes back, the issue of genocide and crime against humanity and war crime will not go away. Because in the 70s and the 90s, we did not have ICC. We did not have genocide as, uh, sorry, we did not have rape as a genocidal offense. Now. Rape is considered a genocide offense, and not to mention we also did not have R2P, right to protection. So these were, uh, these are legal instruments that was not there. Now we have. So the issue of justice has to be uh, brought in. Uh, as we speak, uh, our Prime Minister is in China, and, and we understand uh, that China is an important player, and I've been telling also to the Chinese scholars whenever I have opportunity to meet, that look, it is in your interest that you should resolve the problem. Why? Because they want to invest in one belt, one road, both in Myanmar and Bangladesh. Uh, if and that investment uh, also, uh, you know, part of our account is included. Uh, so I've been telling them that look, for your economic interest, uh, you need to resolve this particular issue because you cannot 
invest billions of dollars where the international community is saying a genocide has been committed. So I think they understand a little bit, only that they don't trust Aung San Suu Kyi at all. That's the other problem. Uh, and, and we can go, I'm sure, uh, today and tomorrow we'll be discussing more in, in details of, of, of all those uh, uh, politics that goes inside China and inside Myanmar. But the fact remains, the issue of justice ought to be done. I'll stop here. Thank you very much.